Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized pieces. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, Solana is looking to do some pretty amazing things as an integration with the Brave browser. Also gonna take a look at uh, New York Mayor as he says that, hey, we should be teaching more about Bitcoin and blockchain. We're gonna take a look how Bitcoin has surpassed Tesla and is really rocketing up in that market cap spot. And finally, we'll take a look at uh, Zimbabwe as there's rumors that it's, it's may adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's just talk about the elephant in the room, which is Simon Yu is here from Stormex. What's up, Simon? Hey, great to be here. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> sure. So we here's what happened, everybody. So what we we're going to do is we were going to just do a quick interview and then me and Simon were talking about it. And I go, hey, man, why don't you just stick around and just do, and talk the news with me because you have more of an insight as a, you know, like a real insider. And he said, sure. So let's just do that, huh? All right. So here's what we got. First of all, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Simon, this one is Trade the Chain. This is Alex Mascioli's, uh, uh project here. And uh, it says 2.88 trillion, but I think it's a little bit higher, somewhere around 3 trillion. Did you ever think we'd hit 3 trillion uh, by this early in this bull cycle? I didn't think it would happen this early. I mean, that, yeah, I think everyone's surprised, right? Uh, but all the institutional funds, you know, start coming in and and this is, we haven't even really started coming. Like once we get a st spot ETF and, you know, oh. more of these traditional sort of capital coming in, I mean, that's why I'm so bullish still, even with all this, um, you know, everyone thinks that this might be the top and we're going to see a three-year bear market coming soon. But if things get approved on time and, you know, I, I do know from a lot of family offices and VCs, they're definitely feeling the FOMO and pressuring their, uh, the LPs are pressuring their firms on like, why can't we get into crypto? Why can't we get into crypto? And um, there's still a lot of money out there. <laughs> <laughs> there's a ton of money. See, these are the yeah. things that I don't, I'm not privy to. That's why I'm glad you're on the show to really back what I've been thinking, which is these these different ho uh, home offices and different LPs and, and and different entities, they probably get pushed and say, hey, we should look into crypto. But I don't, I just hear the stories, but I don't really talk to those people. I'm guessing that is what it is. And it's good to actually hear. Cool. I like that. Let's see here. You know, what's funny is that in the last 24 hours, Solana, even though that that great news we just about to talk about, it's still in 24 hours is down half a point. Hmm. Crazy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Let's take a look. So here's what we got. So this is what is happening. So Solana is looking to add tens of millions of users by becoming the native blockchain of the Brave browser. First of all, Simon, do you use Brave? Do you use Chrome? Do you use something else? What wallet do you use when you're going around and shopping? Besides, of course, Stormax. <laughs> I use, yeah, I use Brave and both Chrome. Um, sometimes like MetaMask or integrations, like one works better than the other. Um, Brave in terms of privacy and stuff, it is, it is better. It is. So now imagine this. Now you have all these millions of people who use Brave, and this now becomes the native blockchain of Brave Browser. Wasn't it basic attention token before that? I thought they yeah, I wasn't sure if they're actually building a blockchain or not. But I mean, it's great news. Solana is, you know, it works. It's fast and it's scalable. Um, I think on the UI front, um, they're upgrading. They're spending a lot of time on that. But I mean, with, with just a few months, I, I think that'll improve quite Quite month. Yeah. Phantom Wallet's already, you know, doing a great job on that, but it just launched like a few months ago. So, but Perfect. Solana works. I love it. <laughs> you love it. And I think, have you guys used it? Have you guys tested it? Um, we have tested a bunch of layer ones and I mean, we've gotten them. There's definitely pros and cons. I mean, when you look at sort of like 2017, like the ICO, like crowd sale boom, you know, other than ETH, there were some chains like Quantum that were really popular and attract large seller that attracted a lot of capital and companies to start building on it. Yeah. But the issue was um, like it was really tough for exchanges and wallets to get integration with some of these chains. And the tokens that launched on Quantum or Stellar, for example, they couldn't get any liquidity. And so when there was no liquidity, all the users got pissed off because they held like, you know, $40,000 of whatever token that was built on Quantum. Yeah. Um, and it was faster. It was like, you know, ETH had like 10 or 20 TPS and Quantum had like 40 or 50. And it was like double, you know, the speed, et cetera. And there were, um, and the CEO was really compelling. He was like, hey, you know, for all the projects that were trying to come on, like, he was saying that like hey vitalik's never going to jump on a call with you and help you work through some of these si like situations by building on eth but i am call me at 3 a.m i'll pick up the phone i'll get some devs to help like sort out stuff as 
it's a very attractive oh. deal. That's why a lot of companies start building on it. But at the end of the day, if there was no liquidity, like what can you do with the token with your product? And um, that's why everyone started migrating back to ETH again. And we're sort of in the similar situations because ETH has been around the longest, like um, exchanges and wallets. And, you know, I think everyone in crypto that has a consumer facing product is trying to deal with um, a user experience problem. Just like, how do you get, how do you make this even simpler for people to try to, you know, dumb it down and get as many normal people in as possible using your product. But sure. Um, if, if it's not ETH, it becomes that much harder just because some of the wallets and infrastructures are not set up yet. So suck. Have you, I mean, you've used phantom wallet, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Right. Better. You can, you can, you can use it. It's super fast. It's intuitive. And also you can actually mm -hmm. see your NFTs in it. Yeah. It. Yeah. Well, that is yeah. pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it again goes down to like, how easy is the app to use? And, you know, like, can you just use a username on the phantom wallet rather than like a, you know, text? And I think those stuff will probably come soon. And then if it becomes as easy as Venmo and that that's when, you know, some of these layer ones are going to start really popping off in terms of usage. So perfect. Yeah. And just like now, now it's going to happen. And it's all about liquidity and marketing and getting your name out there. Well, Solana is going to do this and they become, you know, that, that backbone of uh, brave 42 monthly million users. I don't see why this price won't go up, but uh, I guess time will tell. I think uh, could be a big thing. What do you think, Simon? I think we could uh, see some price appreciation just because of utility. I, I try not to talk about price. I mean, like, I, it's hard, right? Because nah, I, hard. I definitely think the usage is going to go up significantly. But at the end of the day, if Solana is like gas fees are like, you know, like three cents to send a transaction, why do you need a hundred thousand dollars worth of Solana? And, you know, so I think price and, you know, like utility are two different things when you look at layer ones. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think for layer ones, like if there's a better incentive to hold and well, and for Solana, there's a good staking mechanism. Yeah. And, you know, if, uh, being a validator and et cetera. And so that's, that's also good. And if there is more usage and I think more VCs and more, you know, capital on the institution side, will start picking it up. So, yeah, I mean, it, I do think it's bullish overall for sure, but, um, We've also seen like bullish overall. layer ones. Bullish layer overall. Ones. Yeah, but layer ones that don't have a product or you know anything launched being like straight up, you know, it just keeps going off for no reason. And a lot of crypto's speculation still, unfortunately. So it's hard to predict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all speculation until you get mass adoption. And here's how you get it, I think. You get somebody like the the new the pre the mayor elect Eric Adams saying, Hey, we should start to teach about cryptocurrencies and digital assets in schools. And this guy is like a huge bull. And when he said, when he was running, he's like, look, if you elect me, I will make New York the epicenter for Bitcoin and crypto. So what do you think about this one, Simon? Good news, bad news, or you think people are gonna fight him all the way? I, I think it's great news because New York as a state is one of the hardest places to run a crypto business because of the bit license, right? And if he could do something about that, um, I think there will be a lot more crypto companies that are building from New York because it is the financial capital of the world. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of talent, a lot of great, you know, smart people starting to build. Um, I know a lot of people have avoided New York for that reason, but yeah. um, it'd be great to get, you know, education in like a high school course that is straight up about Bitcoin or blockchain because it is the future and it's something that we need. But um, to get, you know, younger kids um, educated yeah. so they can start building from a technology perspective, right? And I, I think you'll notice this with me. It's like I'm more driven by, like, people trying to build rather than, like, price speculation more than anything. But I just get excited if there's, you know, a 16-year-old that wants to build a next blockchain company instead of wanting to, you know, do something else in tech, for example. So Sure. So, hey, so here's a question before we go to the next one and talk about uh, market cap and Tesla. Where'd you grow up, Simon? Which state? Uh, I grew up, you know, half and half uh, Portland and Seattle. So sure. Washington, Oregon. Yeah. When you went through school, was there any kind of education as far as like, um, I mean, STEM, STEM products, STEM projects, and also for finance? When you went through, did they do anything of those types of things, or was it all I'm after a, school projects? Yeah. So I'm a very anti-school person. It, like, I, I'm a very like, if I didn't have to go to school, I, 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 I would have not. You know, just because like everyone learns very differently sure. and i was you know gonna talk about i talked about this too like i mean like certain classes i understand very fast like math always just came to me right away and you know like high school for example like i just 
understood a subject that we were going to learn in like five minutes and just were able to skim through the textbook. And then I got so bored that I started playing a lot of chat dish on my ca calculator and I always got in trouble. So I was always that kid that went to the hallway, you know, and I had to raise my hands, you know, kind of thing like, um, <laughs> you know, cause I was, you know, screwing around according to my teacher, but I always aced every exam. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, like my teacher, one of my, one of my four teachers recognized that and he just didn't care, but the others scolded me. But at the same time, like certain subjects, like, it didn't come to me right away. And I asked a lot of dumb questions and I asked, you know, try to, because for me, like knowledge is like, I'm just really curious about like stuff all the time. And, um, you know, it's just, everyone's pace is really different. And then, uh, there's a great video on like how people learn by Mark Rover. He's a YouTube, you know, like the former NASA guy. And it's mm -hmm. like when you put a video game with like one guy, you know, um, like, Oh, he ran a test with like hundreds of people were like, there was a score that how well you performed versus there was no score. And at the end of the day, the, pe the people that learned from the no score category learned a lot better than the people that had the score, for example. So it wasn't created by like A or B, C or stuff, but it's, it's just, you know, and, and like, are you like, for, yeah. So for me, like, I, I think the education system needs to be a little bit changed, but the important part is people still need to be aware of it, you know, um, yeah. aware of crypto and blockchain. In general. Well, sure. I just because because my big question is, are we are we teaching the right things in school to actually get get to set up the kids for success? I think finance is one of those things. And of course, if we're not if we're not really yeah. pushing the forefront as far as like the STEM projects, then what is the whole yeah. point? Right. And um, yeah, it's just, I. I mean, like definitely like basic finance, like how do you do your taxes or in high school? And I've actually like spoken a lot about this too. And like local meetups and stuff is like high schools should have a category where people come in and say, Hey, like if you're thinking about this college and you're going to be, you know, taking a student loan for $200,000, this is what your monthly payment is going to look like. And yeah. you're going to have a very miserable life. So you might want to think about going to that college, or you might want to think about starting to apply for every scholarship that's out there in the world to try to, you know, you know, get your way or, you know, like try to get a job that might provide you on the financial side of things if you are going to take a huge debt, like, and be aware of that. Because right now, like, you're allowing an 18 year old that doesn't know much about life to make decisions that could impact you for more than a mortgage. And that's why our generation has a hard time buying a house or a car, you know, all these things. And the, the gap just gets worse and worse, because you're so in debt. And I, I, I personally went through that, you know, experience of, having a thousand dollar a month student loan and it was miserable. Sure. Like, yeah. No, no, we all went through it because we were never yeah. taught the things that we were supposed to be taught. Right. Because we thought, oh, well, we're just going to learn about, you know, uh, social studies and history. And that's great mm -hmm. and everything else. But as you kind of get out in the world, you're like, man, I didn't really know anything. And before you know, it, you're like, I'm super in debt. And how do I get yeah. out of this debt? And guess what? There's a there's a shrinking job market. And guess what? There's this thing called inflation. Inflation, what the heck yeah. happened to my money? And before yeah. you know, you're like, what investments and assets? I don't understand all this stuff. <laughs> and you're like, where's all my money? And then it's just a big snowball effect. Yeah. And now you yes. see that huge layer of people who are kind of under, kind of suppressed. And here we are. It's unfortunate. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki thinks it's intentional, like that uh, system's trying to keep people poor. So they have to work in, you know, mindless jobs kind of thing. And it is an interesting thought um, in terms of why it's built like this. But yeah, I mean, there definitely needs to be more awareness to help people as much as possible. So. Well, it worked pretty well for like for like the industrial age. I mean, think mm -hmm. of that, like like in factories, yeah. you go there, you sit or you work and you're in this one little cubicle and you work. Then just the same thing as school. Anyhow, that might <laughs> that might be a little bit off topic of what we were just talking about. Yeah. But I think it's more important than some of the things we actually are. Now, let's mm -hmm. here's what we'll do, Simon. Let's let... Well, we'll finish up on these two and we'll get to the good stuff. So Bitcoin surpasses Tesla by market cap. And I don't, there's nothing really to, to really say beyond the, the actual headline, but it is amazing though, that to where Bitcoin and the crypto market came from to being laughed at and as a joke, yeah. to actually being on the forefront and actually being talked by senators and congressmen and women and actually, you know, presidents of, and, uh, of, of nations and actually being legal tender to where we are right now in 2021. So to think of like it's it's past tesla and it'll probably at some point surpass meta whatever you want to call it as far as facebook i think it's a step in the right direction what do you think uh it's still yeah definitely a step in the right direction it's still early right i mean the fact that individual companies are still valued more than bitcoin what is really the future of money we're still early i mean it should be definitely be higher than gold because it's got so much more practical use cases and there is a finite supply and 
more continues getting lost. So there's, you know, it is depreciate. I mean, the supply is decreasing in a way. Um, but like you said, just like entire countries. I mean, we first started off this year with companies starting to adopt it in their treasury. Because about now we have entire countries like El Salvador just, you know, starting to put their treasuries. I mean, it's just, just the beginning, right? Um, one, uh, there's still 195 countries in the world and you start getting every one of these. And, you know, and the best part like about Bitcoin and crypto in general is typically, you know, for like a VC or like a public company, the VCs and all the great com like the sort of the insiders get the best rates. And then the public can only consume once like the price is re really high after yeah. IPO, for example. But in the case of Bitcoin, retail got in first. Institutions are coming in last and then they're buying, you know, sort of our bags kind of in a way but <laughs> that's why um yeah that's why it, it's created so much more wealth for the average person than it has from any financial capital out there which is it has leveled the playing field it's just been amazing yeah and it really comes down to like you just talked about uh pushing it into mainstream but then utility what does it actually do does it actually serve a function and can it actually be used which of course leads us into our last or second to last story Zimbabwe to potentially adopt as legal tender. Now, don't everybody get worked up as you're watching this. This is just uh, hearsay, per se. Mm -hmm. <laughs> According to a local news station, the country wants to make Bitcoin a legal tender. The Zimbabwe government intends to meet the high demand for digital assets. This is by a recent statement by a retired Brigadier Colonel Charles Wikwedi, member of the government's technology unit. Uh, and then he says, they're presently holding talks with consultants and businesses as to this effect and then he talks about how he the government's still wary of illicit activities and drug use and front running for uh terrorist acts and so on and so forth but if we get a second country in just this year alone how much would that actually lead to the legitimacy of crypto and digital assets and oh yeah it actually has utility what do you think absolutely um i mean the, the entire country you know adopting bitcoin as legal tenure is amazing but we're, yeah we're I, I think we're gonna see more from an institutional side first like before countries start adapting it because you know yeah. us and it, it's gonna anger us for sure if more and more countries start coming in and i think we've already seen like imf trying to cut resources off to el salvador for the bitcoin thing right so yeah um, there's definitely more behind the lines in terms of politics and it, it's gonna be tough for i think countries unless they're in a complete like sort of desperation state where they have to um but from a corporate side i, I definitely think it's um it, it's coming like more and more companies will start adopting it for treasuries etc and be, yeah and see this exactly right and this never would have happened if it wasn't for the lightning network and the actual to be actually have it as utility as mm -hmm. an actual cryptocurrency because i remember mm -hmm. when i got in 2017 we kind of figured out that the store of value narrative it worked and the currency narrative didn't work at all because mm -hmm. there was just such a huge network congestion. Mm -hmm. Lighting network, and it, it changed all that for that layer mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So as we talk about utility, let's just talk about a little Storm X. Because if we're talking about utility, <laughs> this is one of them. And everybody's watching today, just so you know, what is it, November, what is it, Simon? Eighth, ninth? Yep. Soon, we're gonna be in Christmas season, right? And you probably wanna order some things. And if you wanna order some things, why wouldn't you just use a little bit of Storm X, put it on there and actually get uh, crypto cash back? Simon, take it away. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, we have really, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time now and we have really built one of the earliest and most widely used apps in terms of just onboarding people to crypto. And a lot of people got introduced to crypto through us. And, you know, whether you're, you know, booking a flight or a hotel, you can use Expedia or Agoda and any one of our vendors. You can buy shoes from Nike or buy stuff from eBay. We have, you know, uh, over a thousand vendors right now where you could just earn it for free. I mean, we do all the negotiating with all the vendors. So um, we can give, you know, the cash back or for them, like they would have spent it on ad dollars anyway and just pass it on to the consumers. So it's an easy way for us to, you know, just introduce crypto to you so even if you don't have an account like trading account or anything like that you just want to earn it for free definitely use the app and you know, download it on ios android or chrome and start earning some crypto so modest so <laughs> just so you guys know the, it and all kind of goes by by membership it's it's really like just just a reward it's like it's a better version of a rewards program we'll say right so the more storm that you have the better off you are as far as like rewards sounds so 
Yeah, I mean, the bit, you don't have to have any tokens to use the app. You can always earn it for free. The, this is just ah. extra perks, right? So all the reward memberships, uh, these are, think of it like airline miles. So airline programs have, you know, like silver, platinum, like American Express or American Airlines diamond or whatever. But yeah, that part is like, you can never sell your membership back. Uh, in this case, like the number of tokens that you own put you into different categories where you just get bonus cash back. And it's great because we're at, we're just constantly adding more and more stores and we're launching a debit card where, you know, we'll add 15,000 more stores, you know, which will make it even more useful. And you'll just have, you know, sort of extra cash back. And it's that's where the utility comes from in terms of like, hey, there's an actual use case as to why you need these tokens. Um, and like you can and if you don't want the membership anymore, you can just sell it back to anyone, you know, through the exchanges. And, you know, like you can't do that with airline mile, but it's your ownership and it's you know, you have the right. And so that's the flexibility. So that's the real use case. And so for us, yeah, just how do we make this more useful? And currently 99% of the cryptocurrencies don't do anything still. And we're really trying to lead, you know, with innovation in terms of like, okay, let's actually make it useful with the product and then more people will come use it. So. Right. Cool. And Simon, tell people how long you guys have been around for. Um, so I like I've joined full time like 2015, but my co-founder Calvin, um, you know, built the initial version of the app like December of 2013. So you know, it's been like almost eight years now. <laughs> Jesus, crimey Christmas! Eight years so far. Yeah. And then uh, lastly, I will just say this: I think you guys uh, had a pretty uh, sweet deal that was uh, launched out with uh, an NBA team. It looks something like uh, Zeese. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we were the first crypto company to be a Jersey patch partner in the NBA. Um, so we, we made a Portland Trailblazer partnership. Uh, yeah, on Saturday, we got, uh, some of our team members and investors got to fly out and um, watch the game together. We beat the Lakers by a crazy amount. And uh, it's just really awesome seeing, um, you know, crypto companies just being in the main stage of, you know, an NBA arena and um, we're just trying to expand the mass adoption and, you know, it's just, we're really early. I mean, it's only going to, that is true. And growing. Simon, yes, sorry to interrupt, but before I let you go, yep. is there any, is there anything that you can tell us without breaking any confidentiality rules about what's in the future for Stormax? And this is and nothing that you can't say, just anything that's uh, coming down the pipe. Yeah, definitely watch out for a debit card. Um, it, it will be different. There are, you know, other crypto debit cards out there right now, but we're, you know, in, in, incorporating our vendor relationships and we're, um, the, the cashback rates will be very attractive and it will be an easy way for you to earn and spend crypto. So it will be very different than what's all out there. And it'll be even more competitive than some of the traditional, you know, rewards cards, you know, even on the traditional side. So um, definitely look forward to that. We're making a lot of upgrades uh, and updates there and also just, we are launching, you know, governance and we're starting to get more involved in that, which is pretty interesting because, you know, let's say like Apple came out with iPhone 13 and, yeah. you know, consumers are really angry because it's like, hey, you know, there's no innovation. Come on, Tim Cook. Like, I know you're making a lot of <laughs> money, but we want to see something different. You know, they can't vote on that. Ultimately, Apple's the one that makes the decisions and they're the ones that pushes everything out. But we're sort of aiming to be one of the first companies where like, hey, you know, like, we're going to launch this like let's get your feedback as users and the users can vote based on where our product will head towards and that that's going to be interesting like hey you don't like the iphone 13 you want us to make it a, like a foldable screen like samsung and then wait until we release then and the yeah. users all vote 80 percent, you know to 20 percent no and then that's what we'll do and um amazon mm -hmm. or apple or facebook or twitter it's like none of these guys do this currently it's a different mindset uh, it's a different way of thinking. It's a new way of thinking that uh, this will get adopted more because ultimately you're building a product for the users and, you know, then the users get a say and the users, when you, you know, decide, for example, like, should I use Lyft or Uber? It's typically just like, which one's going to be offering a private or, or, or like a better rate, for example. Sure. In our case, like, hey, you are the decision maker. Like you help this company run um and that's where you know we're going to start building sort of these very strong communities that are part of you know what's being built um in a decentralized ecosystem makes sense community yeah. utility mass adoption makes mm -hmm. sense simon that's it for today thanks for being my co-host i appreciate it
yeah and thanks then, for having me <laughs> yeah no problem and then for you watching right now if you like the video get a little value give it a thumbs up give it a like consider subscribing and that's it for today so thanks so much and uh, we'll see you on the next one